This is the third part of our Virtual D Basics tutorial. We are creating an interactive web application with the possibility to change materials and to play the animation. And in the previous part, we managed to set up the light and the camera, so it, it now looks like this. Uh, in this part of the tutorial, we'll be creating materials, actually, so that it now looks gray, and we want it to be more plausible. And um, in order to start creating new materials, uh, let, let's first disable this setting log camera to view because we don't want uh, our view to to modify somehow right so in order to start creating materials let's expand our timeline window here and switch it to shader editor and uh, we can create a new material by clicking here new or Alternatively, we can create a material by selecting a model first, then going to the material tab and clicking new button here. So either of these two buttons will work. So let's start by creating a new material and it will create here it will be presented like a list of options long list of options while here in the shader editor it will be represented by two nodes so the first node uh, represents the output uh, the active output of the material while the these are like a big node with many settings it represents a PBR material. So PBR stands for physically based rendering and it allows you to use our settings that are close to real world such as metallic roughness here are, and other settings are from the real world to set up a material and uh, actually it appears that it uh, it is uh, much easier to use pbr model for creating new materials than to create them by using combinations of uh, mathematical arithmetic uh, operations and so on so uh, this is like a uber shader so it includes everything you need and uh, the results are quite uh, plausible and uh, easy to reset to obtain right so let's start by well actually let's continue by adding a texture to this material so this is actually a material and uh, it is gray by default we can change it to some other color but we don't want a color, we want a texture, so instead of picking a color, just click here this button, small button, and add image texture, image texture. So let's add it. And for now it is empty and we see like a black color for this reason. Uh, but we can open a texture either by opening it from here or from here let's do it from here and we select uh, the first wood texture which we copy it from the starter files open it and it is applied um, you can see it is uh, scale it a bit so it's magnified we want it to be uh, like uh, having more resolution here so we can do it either by scaling uh, 
uh, the UV because our model is UV unwrapped. Let's check it. So let's check that it is UV unwrapped by adding another window here, which is UV editor. And uh, in order to see the UV map here on our model, we go to edit mode. And here we got uh, UV coordinates, which uh, combined with our texture uh, generate the look that we see now on the model, right? So we, we can go this way we can start uh, manipulating this UV map so by selecting all and then uh, like uh, starting to transform it for example resize resize and see how it changes until we get the look we want but a more efficient way is to not to try to transform the UV, but rather to add addition, some additional nodes to the material itself. So let's do it. So uh, this vector here on the texture uh, actually defines how our texture magnifies on the surface or rotates or whatever or shifts so this is not connected to anything because uh, this is made for simplicity but actually this is here uh, there our UV data are supplied and this UV data are represented by our UV map node from the input category right so let's add it let's add it UV map and connect it and we also need to select our UV map but actually it is not it is not necessary it will work but for the sake of clarity let's select it this is uh, how our UV map is named in the model, right? And for now, it just outputs this UV coordinates to the material, but we can change that, but uh, by adding another node called vector and um mapping right here in the middle right so that now we can change uh, the scale parameter instead of scaling this UV map so let's change it by factor for example 5 5 see back to object mode you see it scales and y 5 so that's enough so we just scaled our uv map coordinates uh, directly in the shader instead uh, instead uh, by modifying the data in the model itself so we just can edit to just just do it on the shader level okay we got another wooden object in our scene and this is the drawer so let's apply our uh, wood material to it as well and we will be adding a material not by creating a new material but rather selecting the material we already created and assigning it to this model 
By the way, it is always a good idea to change the default names for all object materials uh, in order to be uh, accessible later when we'll be uh, creating interactive scenarios. So let's change it to say wood one. Also, be sure to save uh, your files by selecting file, save or just using the shortcut control s right so we want now to create a new material for the legs uh, let's select legs create new and we want it to be reflective material metallic material such as chrome so let's make uh, change the name chrome change it but it still doesn't look like chrome okay so in order for a material to be reflective it needs to obviously to reflect something and we need to set up some environment first to set up an environment, switch to world from object to world in the same shader editor and then click here use nodes and this will immediately add two nodes one is output for the results and the another is the other is background which uh, just uh, supplies some color uh, some gray color so it actually doesn't change anything until we add uh, an environment texture not environment texture add it and uh, where to get an environment texture so actually we already got an environment texture uh, in the default cube project so when we replace it our default cube blend file with uh, our nightstand blend file we also copied uh, textures, wood textures, right? But actually, the cube project it contains uh, an environment texture which we didn't delete, and this is uh, was a right decision because we now can reuse it for our project. So let's open it and it is here environment dot hdr so this is a texture in hdr format which we just open just open we can also open it here just to take a look so this is our environment texture which contains some color information and also brightness information brightness information so uh, that it will influence both the reflections and the lighting on our scene so let's connect it let's connect and now we see this environment and the model got brighter much brighter actually um, we will deal with the brightness later but now our material still doesn't reflect anything and uh, to fix this switch to object and change the metallic factor from zero to something more um, 
like uh, maybe make it just one uh, still change this uh, nothing because we have roughness which is too high and let's make it uh, say point one and now we see something is reflected uh, let's check it sneak peek yeah is this reflected and we got environment around us cool uh, so uh, what about the brightness? So yes, uh, the texture also affects the lighting in our scene. And let's make it a bit less bright by switching back to word and reducing the strength. So let's reduce it, say make it 0.6 and this is it. Now it looks uh, wooden material for the drawer and for the body and reflective material for the legs. So it works. Uh, we got also actually uh, these tiny models. These are tips. We want them also to be metallic, so just add chrome material to them, and now they are reflective as well. So that's it. We set up our materials to our model and can continue uh, with uh, improvements in the next part. See you later.